As long as I've been in Virgin Atlantic, I've always been really interested about environmental issues, sustainability, but I'm really looking to find out more about what we're doing as an airline to reduce our impact and our carbon emissions. There are three big things that we need to focus on to reduce our carbon emissions. The first is the fleets that we have. The second is an international agreement called Corsia. And the third is what we do with new technologies like sustainable fuels. I love the fact that people like Simon and other cabin crew are finding out what it is that we do because then they can tell our customers. Now you've mentioned fleet. I've actually had a really good conversation with Rick, our head of fleet planning. From what I've heard about your role, it really does sound like one of the coolest jobs in Virgin Atlantic. Buying aircraft, am I right? Well, that's the, the glamorous part of the job. Obviously, we do a lot of analysis in the background. So yes, ultimately, what we, we want to do in fleet planning is, is buy the best. From when I joined Virgin Atlantic, I predominantly flew on four engine aircraft. We're now predominantly twin engine aircraft. Can you explain why that change? You can save approximately 30% of fuel burn by switching from a four-engined aircraft to a twin of comparable size. And between 2011 and 2021, Virgin are actually going to have rolled all of our aircraft um, from four-engined aircraft to twins. But it doesn't stop there. At, at the end of 2021, we start replacing some of our twins again with the most fuel and carbon efficient uh, version of those aircraft. Is there anything other than the planes themselves that we can do that can contribute to the carbon reductions? We're very much focused in our operations of reducing the weight that gets put on board our aircraft and then our operational procedures. So we have procedures such as reduced engine taxi. All these procedures do help us optimise the efficiency. It was really interesting to hear about the projects and decisions that are made with our fleet. Now you did mention something called Corsia. What is Corsia? So Corsia stands for Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation. So it's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> which is why I tend to just call it Corsia. Um, but in simple terms, Corsia is the climate agreement for international aviation. It comes in in 2020 and it's an agreement whereby globally for aviation, we're committing to carbon neutral growth. So all of our growth in carbon emissions past the year 2020 will invest into offset schemes. OK, so offsetting, what is that? What you do is you invest in carbon reductions in a project elsewhere. So an example might be investing in a wind farm that generates energy. And through Corsia, globally the aviation industry is going to be investing billions of dollars in some really credible and impactful carbon reduction projects. And we also want to be driving down our real carbon reductions as well. And that's when it comes to the new technologies that we're, that we're looking at. I've actually had a really good conversation with Emma Harvey about Lanzatech and our sustainable fuel projects. Well, that flight that we did together was very momentous. Can you tell me a bit more? Sustainable aviation fuels is the term we use for fuels that are made from a, diff a variety of different feedstocks, but they're not made from fossil fuels coming out of the ground. But actually, it's a broader term because we've got some exciting new advanced technologies coming through now. What's interesting about Lanzatech and really exciting is that they make fuels from carbon-rich waste gases from heavy industrial facilities like steel mills or refineries. So they are capturing gases like carbon monoxide that would normally be flared into the atmosphere as greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. So it's recycled carbon making fuels. Being on that flight with you, what was lovely was that customers wouldn't have known that it was anything other than a regular flight. That flight was the world's first flight using this groundbreaking new technology and it was from the first batch of fuel ever produced in the world. So what we're working on now is supporting Lanzatech to scale up to full-size plants and we want that first full-size plant to be in the UK. So we've been talking to the UK government for quite some time about this, they've been really helpful. Last year the Department for Transport included aviation fuels in the incentive scheme for the first time. But because the policies were written so many years ago, they didn't account for new technologies like this actually within the wording. We're absolutely itching to get these incentives because that will make the fuel much more affordable. So it will bring the price of that fuel at, at commercial volumes on a par with a fossil price. 
And if we get those incentives now, then we're talking about plants built within the next two or three years. Well, given everything that I've learned, it's all so interesting, especially seeing how much goes on behind the scenes. But what else can we do? There's a really simple thing that customers can do, and that is to pack lighter. You've learnt that the weight of the aircraft impacts how much fuel we use in a flight, so less luggage, less weight, less fuel. But also, we talked about offsetting. Our customers can get involved in offsetting as well. So we've created a carbon calculator which allows our customers um, to go online, work out what the carbon emissions would have been associated with their flight, and then they can offset that if they want to. I really have learned so much and I'm so excited to be able to bring this back to my colleagues, to our customers, up in the air where I work every week.